the home of Pixar Animation Studios, the people who created Toy Story and Cars. Emeryville, California, in an earlier life, produced some of the finest trucks. Emeryville was the longtime home of International Harvester's West Coast Truck Plant. In fact, some of the trucks built in Emeryville, in particular the DCO 405s, were called Emeryvilles. Hi everyone, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk, where I talk about die-cast models and the histories behind the real machines. So, make sure you go on and subscribe to my channel to not miss a single video. Today, I want to review Neo Scale Models Emeryville DCOF 405 COE Truck Tractor. The real truck was made between 1957 and 1964 when they were discontinued and replaced by the CO 4000D. Just a hint, I've got a few of these DCOFs left to buy with the link down in the description below to my website. And once they are gone, they are gone because Neo is no longer in business. In the California Bay Area, the town of Emeryville was incorporated December 2nd, 1896. It was named after Joseph Stickney Emery, who came during the California Gold Rush and acquired large tracts of land in what became known as Emery's. Covering just two square miles of Alameda County, Emeryville, California had a booming industrial district in the post-war era. From a trucking standpoint, Emeryville was a boom town. Pacific Intermountain Express had a huge terminal and International Harvester had its West Coast assembly plant. In the 1930s, International Harvester saw the industrial area of Emeryville as a perfect site for a West Coast assembly plant. Once this plant was in operation, it became a major heavy truck builder in the IH network of operations. During the 1950s, International Harvester's factory turned out heavy service rigs designed for construction, oil field work, and over-the-road hauling. Through the 1950s, IH's most famous line haul tractor was the snub-nosed RDC 405. In 1957, the completely new DCO 405 high tilt cab tractor replaced the DC 405 non tilting COE. The new cab was based on the Diamond T cab of the IH CO 180 to CO 220 series, but mounted much higher to clear big bore diesels and the required big radiators. In 1959, the DCO 405 was restyled slightly with new dual headlights, which is the version that Neo Scale models made in 164 scale. Later on, IH reverted back to the single headlights. The huge windshields and West Coast power made these new cab overs a big hit with customers and brought on major sales success for International. In fact, these trucks were so popular, they took on the nickname Emeryville after their city of manufacture. The Emeryville trucks were so popular with customers that IH made many variations of these trucks with bigger load capacities and, in some cases, dual steerable front axles. International began building other specialized trucks at its Emeryville plant, such as the Sightliner cabs with additional windows beneath the front windshield. In 1961, International decided to bring out a new line of Emeryvilles, this time as conventional cabs. The new conventionals used a modified version of the earlier Emeryville tilt cab that the cab over tractors had been using since 1957 with a hood mounted in front. For a 1960s conventional, it was relatively compact with a fairly short 
bumper to back a cab. 1971 marked the end of the Emeryville line of trucks when IH introduced the 4200-4300 series of trucks, which replaced the DC-400 Transtar, thus ending a long run of famous trucks. Let me know in the comments what you thought of international trucks, and let's head on over to the rock quarry to talk about the Neo version of one of these awesome Emeryvilles. And here we go guys, this is the 1959 International DCOF 405 Emeryville Cab Over Tractor by Neo Scale Models. It is a resin cab sitting on a die cast frame. It comes in this very nice hardboard sleeve with a black plastic base and a clear plastic lid. Also in the back you can see it has the nice little mirror piece so you can mostly see what the passenger side looks like without taking it out of the box. Now with these hardboard sleeves, <laughs> that's not really a problem to slide it out, but it's still nice. And it also helps you when you're seeing them on a toy store shelf, you can actually see what the other side looks like. But on your own shelf, it's easy to take them out so you can look at it. Now this display case is really nice because what it does is it um, allows you to keep your toys very very dust free which believe me it comes in awfully daggone handy now it's just attached to the display case with two phillips head screws pretty easy put your thumb under the base plate and your forefinger up there and put a little pressure so you don't knock them off and then take them off the base plate and there you go because Quite frankly, guys, I think it's boring to leave these things sitting in their box and putting them in the back of a closet. Get them out. Put them on a shelf. Or put them on a diorama. That's even better. That way you can really see them. Anyway, you can see that cab back to this truck, and you can see that the cab is Harvester Red. The frame is black. The quarter fenders are black. It has no rear mud flaps, but it does have front mud flaps behind the front wheels. There's also a tiny ladder there, which is hard to see, and it's attached underneath the um, battery box on the driver's side, and it's actually just attached to that platform piece on the passenger side. It has twin fuel tanks with uh, fuel filler caps on them, and they are painted in black. Not great big tanks, but they'd be very, very typical of the era. It has black five-spoke wheels, it has black five-spoke Dayton style wheels with silver trim rings and a very, very nice vintage tread pattern tire. Now, this was one of the very first trucks that they ever released, so you kind of got to be careful. That fifth wheel sometimes it does need to be honed out in order to hitch up to a modern trailer. But other than that, this thing is great. It will go real well with the vintage trailers that DCP made or first gear or even top shelf replicas. Around to the front, you can see this very nice uh, straight style bumper, which was common of the era. A license plate hanging down underneath the bumper, and that is an Alaska plate. Really cool. How'd you like to drive this up there on the Dalton? Man, these things barely kept, the, kept you warm down here. How'd you like to drive up there? Anyway, it has a photo etched grill and a photo etch trim piece around here that's painted white. That way it looks like it's red and white and then it also looks like that little very very tiny thin stainless piece that went around the grill. Just trim piece. And then it's very hard to see but right there is the IH logo and that is another photo etch piece. These two little uh, air intake grills they're also photo etch pieces. The headlight pods are two resin pieces with four little bitty jewels put in to make individual headlights and they have a sealed beam pattern on them. The turn signals are mounted on top of the little fenders because this cab is actually narrower than the whole width of the body. They gave you room to put the, fin the turn signals there and it also gave you a little bitty walkway that you could walk, climb up and then walk down beside the cab really nice that they did that cab interior it has two gray uh, low back seats it has a gear shift on the floor a gray 
uh, dashboard and it has a black steering wheel. Windows are all photo etched on this guy. Mirrors are resin. The air horn is resin and so are the roof lights. They're individual pieces. There's five of them. They're painted silver and then they dab on a little amber color so they look like amber lenses. They're like, it's a little, just a little bit of yellow orange paint. The windshield wipers, now be careful with those guys. They are photo etched pieces and easy to just grab and flip right off the truck. So be real careful with those. Passenger side, same as the driver's side, but in no battery box here. You can see the exhaust pipe goes down underneath and under the cab. You can see right there. The ladder is mounted higher up. Mud flap is there. Now what I didn't mention on the driver's side is there's a little grab bar. That's a little piece of wire that's bent and folded around. Works. And then a resin door handle, which you just grab to open the doors. Pretty, pretty common. But now you can see here, it has a little black section where you would step to walk in. Probably should have gone all the way back, but oh well. That's just the way they made it. These guys had more thought to getting in and out than the later cab overs where they just pulled the cab out to the side and you just had to crawl over the wheel. That was real brilliant. But anyway, there's the mirrors. It's got this piece that's molded into the sleeper. Real, real nice cab that they've got here. And if you notice, these cabs were very small. How'd you like to drive that compared to today's trucks? Wow. Coming around to the back, it has another Alaska plate. You can see it right there. Two individual dual style brake lights. You can see the back of the differential and you can see the nice vintage tread pattern. Tipping it up a little bit. And here you can see it has the uh, black high mount air intake, which comes down to the air cleaner, which is mounted under the cab. Cab overs were very, very common with these high intake ducts, stucking the air above the cab instead of underneath or in front of the truck. Whereas your conventionals typically just sucked it right there in front of the cab. Even today, that's the way most of your conventionals do in the U.S. Now in other parts of the world, uh, where it's more dusty, yep, they come from up above, like Australia. The fifth wheel is here. It pivots. It'll accommodate DCP, top shelf, and first gear vintage trailers, like I said before. Now it shows a real nice back of the cab detail. The resin really, really, really allows you to mold detail so much better than die cast. That's one of the major benefits to resin. Now we tip him underneath. And you can see it has 164 International Harvester DCOF 405 1959 tampoed on one frame rail. Neo scale models tampoed on the other. Front uh, axle is there, and it has Made in China cast into it, and it also has a tie rod behind it. Now, there is no steering on these guys. These do not steer. It's a straight axle. But the upside is, guess what? They roll straight. I would rather have them roll straight than have steering. Steering's kind of pointless to me. But anyway, some guys like it. Front spring suspension, bottom of the engine, bottom of the transmission, with a drive shaft connecting to the first axle and a drive shaft connecting the second axle and a real nice rear spring suspension. Plus they got those real nice uh, differentials. Neo did a super nice job. You can see down there the uh, exhaust pipe coming from the engine going out to the muffler and then you can also see the air cleaner right there behind the fuel tank. Right there. Coming in from that uh, high mount duct. Now let's go on and set this down and we'll hook it up to a trailer because I want you guys to know what these guys look like with a trailer. The way they'd be out on the highway is they'd have a trailer behind them. And there we go. I think that looks really sharp. A 40 foot DCP vintage dry van hooked up to the Neo Scale Models 1959 International DCOF 405 Emeryville cab over engine tractor. Resin cab on die cast frame pulling that die cast trailer. Doesn't that look sharp guys? Neo Scale Models jumped into the toy truck market in 43rd scale and then quickly moved over to the 64th scale market with vintage trucks. Many of these are fairly obscure real trucks 
but most were of the most popular trucks of the past, like the International Emeryville. Today, Neo has stopped production of all models, so the few left with dealers is all that will be available that are not in the hunt and hope to find on the secondary market. That secondary market is lots of luck to find what you are looking for and in almost all cases quite a bit more expensive. So if you want to get one of these great international Emerybills, don't wait and buy it right now on my site while the link is still in the description below. Once they are sold out, that link will disappear forever. Now, if that link is gone, don't stress as I've still got something for you. I've got a free checklist on every Neo scale models, 164 scale truck that they have ever made. So you can go on the hunt to find them for your collection. There's a link to that checklist as well in the description below. And hint, even if the truck is still available, this checklist will be invaluable to you in your search for Neo scale models trucks. Thanks for watching everyone. Please be sure to smash that like button to really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with your friends and your followers as I'm totally sure that they will appreciate it. And go on and subscribe to my channel for more great diecast model reviews and the histories of the real machines. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back in the warehouse soon with another episode of Toy Talk.